Hi, it's Therese from Lost in Paper and I'm back to colour with you and today I have this gorgeous girl. She's a Ducrafts uh, limited edition, I think it is stamp, called the Pretend Friend. And these are sort of mini versions of the stamps that were around. I don't even know if you can still get them anymore, but I thought she was so cute. So I don't even know where I bought her from. I think I was just online shopping once and thought, oh, I need that. And I haven't had a chance to colour her up until today. So I decided to get my Prisma colours out. Look how nice these stamps are. Like they're actually coloured on the cling side of the stamp. How awesome is that? Anyway, back to my story. I haven't actually coloured her, had a chance to colour her. I've been um, quite busy lately and I just thought it'd be a really nice idea to get the Prisma colours out and just do some relaxing and colouring and share it with you. So I'll just explain the process of how I lay down my colour for the Prismas. I, I find them one of the easiest mediums to use. So if you're not really confident with colouring, this would be what I tend to go for. I find them much easier to use than say Copics or even the Inktense pencils. And, and watercolouring. I get a bit um, weird with watercolouring <laughs> as well. I don't control it too much, I think. So with Prismacolours, to keep it really simple, I actually lay down my colour first with the pencil so I'm doing the skin tones at the moment so I've laid my lightest colour I've also already put in some of the shadow so I've used a light peach and then a peach colour and then some pink on her cheeks now I'm using some Gamsol or it's just white odorless mineral spirit and a blending stump and then I'm kind of just smushing the colour and what this does it actually blends the pencil because they're a wax face pencil they um the gamsol will help blend it together and give you that nice smooth finish i usually find that i like to keep adding it in layers because if the blending stump will actually remove some of the color as well and if i do have too much color on my stump then i can draw it off to the side on a piece of paper which is probably what you saw me do just a few seconds ago the other good thing about Prismacolor pencils is that you can keep layering and that's what works really well so you can change colors by layering you can also um, add more depth by layering and shadows so even though I'll finish sort of coloring a certain area often I'll come back to it afterwards so it's almost like I put down an initial color on the whole image and then I start adding all the layers in after that and they'll come back to where I started maybe if I think it needs to be made a bit darker or add some shading shadow or even change the color sometimes so her hair in the in the picture it was black and I didn't quite want it to be as dark as that so this has a lot of sort of guides in the actual hair it's actually got lots of shadow in that already drawn in so I use that to my advantage and just use the lighter brown in those areas and the darker brown at at the places where the shadow is going to be so her dress you could do anything here because there's no the only built-in or drawn in folds on this particular dress are on both edges so I just thought to add a little bit of interest I've added a couple of folds in the center of the dress and to make it look a little, little bit more natural I've made one a bit longer than the other I don't know if you can notice that and then I'm adding some shading I've kept a section of the dress white just to sort of mimic the look of some light shining on the fabric and I don't know if you can see it but those are those little black spots are actually tiny little hearts it's so sweet And I just, like I said before, I just keep coming back in with the colour again until I'm happy with how it is. I can use, I can use my blending stump and I often do, but sometimes I just use the pencil. Now to work out what colour it's going to go together, I'm using my colour wheel and that complementary colour is that sort of orange red colour. So I thought this sort of salmon orange colour would be perfect. And... I'm adding that to the stripes now I even shaded like these stockings are shaded as well if you can tell it's a dark orange I've used in the middle and then I come back with some gray to make the white look like it's shaded as well 
I think I ended up putting like about four different colors on those stockings and it's such a tiny area. So as a final touch, what I usually do is come in with the black pencil at the end and I'm not going to blend this out. I'm just adding it quite lightly. It looks like I'm drawing, <laughs> drawing it on really heavily, but I'm actually just adding it fairly lightly to the image. And it makes such a difference to the whole finished overall look. I even use it on her stockings and they're white. Awesome. Okay. So I want to fussy cut her out, but leave a little white border. And here's a trick. When you're cutting something that is fine or in the center of something like in between her legs here, it's easier to cut that section out first before you fussy cut around the image. I actually started fussy cutting her out and then I realized I hadn't done that. But it just gives you the support of the rest of the paper where the image is. And don't press too hard. If you're using a blade, don't press too hard on the blade. Uh, you're better off to go over it a couple of times. You have a lot more control when you press lightly and um, don't drag it too much. If that makes sense. So now I'm going to work on my card base and this is actually the front of my card. It's a top fold card and I've got some peach bellini. This is a my favorite things dye ink pad. It's a really pretty color and I've got a background stamp from Hero Arts called a uh, tiny heart background and I've just used a baby wipe to wipe away some of the ink just so that it doesn't have those sort of sharp edges. And then I find with the background stamps, heaps easier just to flip my card over and use the table to support the stamp. They're just too hard to turn over and um, kind of stamp with, unless you've got a really big block or you're a clever person. Now for my sentiment, I've got a script wood veneer word. It's from Freckled Fawn and just going to use my Tombow. Try not to add too much to the back of it. And I want it to look like she's going to be standing on top of the word. Isn't that peach Bellini really pretty? Very, very pretty color. Like it. And then I just pop her up with some adhesive foam. And this is probably about the same height as the wood veneer. There you go. And once she's stuck down, that's it. Oh no, I did actually add a little tiny gem to the bow in her hair. Thanks for joining me today. I've had heaps of fun. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.